What up, what up, what up? Welcome back to another episode of Cultivated Ignorance. I am Will, the host. I am Mike, the favorite host. Today we are joined by an amazing guest, a little outside of the box guest for the show. Uh, today we are joined by Mr. Brian Craig, and uh, he is a certified sexologist and certified authentic tantra practitioner. What's going on, brother? Hey, what's going on, man? Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, man, it's it's uh, it's gonna be an interesting one because I don't think many of our uh, much much of our fan base knows about tantra or uh, yeah, I'm ready because I damn sure don't know a thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, Let's get it. Yeah, man. So um, first, real quick, everybody, go check out our Patreon. www.patreon.com slash cultivated ignorance. Got dope shit on there. <laughs> on to the show. <laughs> um, the quickest Patreon shout out ever. Yeah, it's the quickest Patreon shout out. I'm, I'm excited, man, because I don't, I don't know much about Tantra at all. Um, I think the most I've seen of Tantra is like some stuff on like real sex back 10, 15 years Yo, ago. real <laughs> sex? Back in the day, yeah. <laughs> back in the day, yep. That's a different kind of Tantra. <laughs> um, so, so I just yeah, love man, that show. <laughs> yeah, with that in mind, man, uh, what, what exactly is Tantra and how did you get involved in it? Uh, what, what, what kind of started your journey? Um, well, I'll start what started my journey. Um, I uh, was looking for ways to enhance my sex life, enhance my knowledge about sex and sexuality, um, specifically around energy around sex, not just the physical. I mean, the physical is there. I mean, pretty much at the end of the day, every animal goes out and and fucks and have sex and have sex so it's like what yeah. do we have as humans that as intelligent you know gods walking this earth what do we have that's different obviously there's some knowledge we have i believe that's been lost um that we've always had and i have my reason around why i feel like we've kind of been disconnected from that so uh my wife and i sought out to try to find uh knowledge about tantra and, and we call sacred sexuality and we didn't find anything that looked like us. We talked about that before uh, the show started. And so we actually created a retreat uh, back in 2000, I believe 16 is our first retreat. And, and we brought in different people around Tantra and sacred sexuality. And then, you know, we decided we wanted to be certified. So we uh, my wife and I got certified um, under the Institute of, of Authentic Tantra Education, and it's called Authentic Tantra for a reason. A lot of Tantra that you see, even the ones you saw on um, in real sex or whatever you see, a lot of them is Neo Tantra, which means pretty much new Tantra was created within, you know, most recently. And there's no lineage base. So the Tantra that we teach is um, it's Tibetan Tantra uh, using the five elements which goes back 17,000 years. Uh, so there's a lineage that we follow that, that, you know, that, that we teach. So Tantra is a spiritual science, it's a spiritual practice. It's something that really, it, it really deals a lot with um, healing our trauma because we are sacred sexual beings, that's how we are. But what happens is at some point, the sacred and the sexual has been separated because we, someone felt that it was could not coexist in our beings because that's who we are. So we've been running around like mindless animals without understanding that we are gods walking this earth with the ability to move energy and to uh, do a lot of things more than what you know we learn from porn. So I'll leave it at that. I know we're gonna dive deeper, but I'll just stop right there if that answers your question. No, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. That got. So that's the main reason we wanted to talk to, you know, specifically, man. And this can hopefully hopefully this information can apply to everybody, but that's mainly right, why I wanted to right. like black men, because I feel like we're the most socialized to be animalistic about sex, it seems like. Right. Like like men are black men are probably the most sexualized of men because you know, we gotta have this giant dick and shit. We gotta be like right. the fucking <laughs> we got exotic right, exactly being from like Especially if you're fucking with white women and shit, like it gets all gross. It gets super gross real quick. Um, right. So like, yeah, I wanted to look at like how we can just make it more spiritual and more personal for men. So I guess we can go, like I said, we can get right into it. Are there any, like, what's your, I know this is like, you only got like an hour, but like, what would be like the That's best cool. tantric exercise you would kind of 
advise men to start like both by themselves and with a partner? Like what's one for just, just by ourselves and what's one for like with our partner? Well, um, that's a very good question. And first thing I would say is we're not present. We, we don't have presence. We are always somewhere else. Even if we are most men in order to, you know, enhance the sexual experience, maybe porn is playing or you're thinking about something else or even role play, nothing wrong with that. And I'm not bashing porn, don't get me wrong. But I'm saying is that that shouldn't be our initial go-to. So I think cultivating presence is the first thing, which is meditation and, um, you know, meditation and breathing. So we, you know, we, first of all, when we teach our clients, I teach my male clients, it's like, first of all, let's breathe. Can you even slow your breath down? Because what it does is then slow down your nervous system. You're not always in a fight or flight mode. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what a lot, has a lot of men where they're pre, you know, um, they have pre, you know, premature ejaculation or, you know, pretty much PE and, or they can't even get an erection. And so they need outside stimulation to get that. So if you're present with your body and what you're feeling, then you can connect back with your body. There's a huge disconnect between a man's heart and his genitals. Like literally it's a disconnect. It like, doesn't even exist. Only mm -hmm. thing that exists for us is our dick. And that's it, the dick inside. And that's it. Where reality is that our heart is what gives us an expansion. And this is what the space element, we teach the elements. This is our, our space element. And space gives us space and expansion and allows us to literally be in a whole, a bigger space than just right here in our dick, you know? So um, I don't know if I answered your question or not, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, <clears throat> um, I know you said, uh, when doing Tantra, you work with the five elements. Does Are you talking about yes. uh, like the chakras or is that something completely different? Yeah, they're, they're, they're right, right by the chakras. Well, they're, the elements are located in the chakras. So the fire element is located in the sex chakra. We have our the earth element located in the chakra right by our belly, right in our, by our navel. Space elements by our heart, um, ear elements in our throat, and water element is in our head. So all these elements, the uh, reason I love this practice is because these are elements that we experience on a daily basis. It's not out there in the ethers. It's in our bodies. This is what's in the earth. It's what we experience every day. So while a lot of people that practice some kind of tantra, they want to flow it out there and go out here, but our, 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 our um, trauma is are in our bodies and also our pleasure is in our body. It's not out there. We experience it in our body. We have nerves that we experience our pleasure. So we keep that in the body. So, um, so yeah, so it's, it is located by the chakras. So do you feel like you can, um, I don't want to say this. Do you feel like you can, I guess, connect with your, or, or start the, the journey of going down and doing Tantra and really getting good with it without kind of just working on your, your chakras and, I mean, well, I'm sorry, your elements first, or is it, what? can, can you go well, down? the Tantra journey without doing that? Well, the Tantra that we teach, the reason why we, we focus on, you know, the, the, you know, the elements is because it helps us to dissolve a lot of the trauma in our body. So that our meditation you know, focused around the elements and, and so dissolving those things in our body that's keeping us from pleasure because we're created for pleasure like literally wired for it that's how our nerve we're, we're wired for it but we're separated from it really again because of trauma so what what the elements do is help does is help to heal those traumas that we're experiencing um and so can you learn tantra without it not the type of tantra that we teach um but you can start one well, where a person can start is learning to, again, to breathe, is your breath. Can you breathe 21 times? We have men that come before us that literally can't sit in one place and breathe without, you know, just breathe for 21, 21 breaths. And it's because it's hard for some people to be present in their bodies. Again, because that's where the trauma lies. But if you can get past that, then you get, past, get to a place of pleasure and bliss. Um, but Sometimes it doesn't always feel doesn't always feel good in the beginning. You know, people want 
torture, ooh, good sex, ooh, orgasm, ooh. And it's like, okay, we'll get there, but what's blocking from it? It's like literally doing that in a distance and seeing, you know, your desired location, but it's a big wall blocking it and you see it, it's there, it's available to you, but until you can get past the blockage, you can't even get to it. So that's why the work with the elements are really important. I feel you. I, I had read, uh, I don't know what book it was, but I, I read something on the chakras and I was like, oh, this is really, really interesting. And I never did anything with it. <laughs> I feel like I feel like that's how a lot of people's uh, just a lot, how a lot of people's stuff in life goes. Like they'll, they'll, they'll right. like open their mind up to something just barely and then they work. Yeah. It and work. Do you think yeah. a lot? In uh, oh, absolutely, like <laughs> absolutely. We've had people that maybe not physically run, but run because <laughs> it does take her. But what does it, right? I mean, if you want to, you know, build your muscles, obviously, we use this analogy all the time, like it, you got to put the work in to see the results. But people want you to say, um, okay, here it is, here's Tantra, and literally be. Uh, tantra god without putting that work in you know so uh, you got to put that work in and and it's the hardest part with with black men uh, especially and i think you said this is mostly men but especially black men is saying yes to getting this work because they feel like if they say that i need help that it diminishes who they are as a man when actually it actually empowers them as a man to get educated on this. We get education on everything else. But when's the last time you had a sex ed class? Was it the eighth grade where they told you about, you know, how not to get STDs and pregnancy and, and that's it? They didn't teach about pleasure. Was pleasure even mentioned? Not at all. So there is no adult sex education. So who and what is educating us is porn and porn stars. Again, nothing wrong if that's your thing, but I think it's, it's not real sex. I know personally people that create porn and literally they're like, it's go, stop, go, stop. Okay, move here. Okay, stroke. Okay, stop. Okay, well, it's not oh. real. What you're watching and trying to replicate is it's fake. So, and that's what we're doing. So we, we resort to being the pussy up or making her tap out or, you know, spitting on it or slapping. And it's nothing wrong if that's your thing. Don't get me wrong. But on now, like we've got to, we have to evolve to a bigger place than that. You know what I mean? A better place than that. Like you can put that in your toolbox, but your toolbox has got to be more expanded than what you're watching on porn. Man, you just hit so many. Uh, I wanted to stop you because you was hit so many <laughs> good points. <laughs> like I was like from <laughs> how we don't have true sex education in terms of like teaching people. How to give themselves proper pleasure as well as the partner to like right the whole, like me and you talked about the whole like the whole beat the pussy up shit which is just right you're talking about beating pussy up like it's something like we hate like we want to assault the pussy or something you know what i'm saying why why is that our goal and more that's importantly what's our next say what will i said that's it that's what porn taught me to do Bro, porn taught me just to damn that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> So we have for him, Johnny. That's exactly. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And and the next topic, which is um being multi-orgasmic, um, which I mean, just to put a little bit of my business out there, like I'm just now getting to the point of doing this again myself because of tantra exercises. Like right. everything Brian just said was on point about the breathing shit. One of the things that was hindering me, because I've always taken a very long time to orgasm during sex, and I could not figure out okay. why. I thought it was because I kind of have had sex sporadically throughout my life. I've never, well, unless I was in a long-term relationship, I've never really had like consistent sex, like on a regular basis up until, you know, not too long ago. But like one thing that will right. prohibit me is like, it took me forever to come and I could not figure out why. I just thought it was just, I just didn't do it enough. But like my breathing was fucked up. Like I would stop breathing so many times. Um, yeah. My, my, my mind would be all over the place. My mind would be like, Am I doing this right? Am I doing that right? I don't want to just be in the moment. Like, what are some other things that you would kind of, because I know that's what men who are watching this want to know. Like, what are some other things that you can do to become multi-orgasmic as a man? Um, 
yeah, what you said is absolutely correct. And people usually have their or two of those, you know, reactions. Like you said, it took you a long time to come. A lot of men experience the opposite where they can't even get an erection or keep it up because of their breathing. Um, so as far as being multi-orgasmic, that's the first step. And there are practices. I mean, this is, I take men through a 13 week course that we dive in and we go deep into, you know, the tools they need in order to do that. But the first thing is acknowledging that your ejaculation and your orgasm are two totally different functions. We've, you know, been taught in the way our body performs is as one function because we're not taught any better, but it's two different functions. And there's a way you can have a full orgasm and still withhold your, your semen. And this is not edging. Again, full orgasms. People say, oh, I'm practicing practice semen retention, which means edging to them. Like you get there and then stop. You get that, no, this is experiencing an orgasm and still not ejaculating. So, but it's a practice. Again, and what is a practice? The practice takes practice. So um, I can't teach what it would take in an hour. I can just tell you it's possible, which first, just even mentioning that, a lot of men is like, what, what are you talking about? Like, how is that even possible? Like, I, and, you know, again, porn has trained us to say that, you know, look for the money shot. And it's not only for us, even our partner sometimes it's like, oh, come, oh, come, oh, go ahead and come. And it's like, it's an encouragement. And it's like, kind of like, oh, her badge of honor, like I made the nut. And so it's like, realizing that doesn't mean that's not representative of my pleasure. My pleasure is the minute I connect with you, when I'm holding you and yeah, I'll be and I'm breathing with you. When I'm, you know, massaging the bulbs of the clitoris, like people could think the clitoris is just this little thing right here, not realizing the entire structure with legs and bulbs that can be stimulated that helps her, her, her erectile tissue to be engorged. It takes a woman about 20 to 45 minutes to be fully engorged to enjoy sex and be ready for sex when the most men are done in three to five minutes. So how do we bridge that gap? We have to learn our partner. You think you know your woman, but you don't. Because one, every woman is different, first of all. So if you come with a, a partner you had and bring that into your new relationship, you realize they're not the same people. Everyone is different. So get to learn your partner. You know, get to communicate during sex. Stop thinking you know what she wants. Stop thinking she wants to pussy, pussy beat up all the time in doggy style. There's no way there's zero eye, you know, connection. You're not even looking into the windows of her soul to connect with her. You're just connecting, you know, genital to genital. I'm not saying there's a feel good. I'm saying it's more to be had. It's a deeper place to go. So I got a quick question. Yes, sir. That the ejaculation and the uh, orgasm is different for men. Does yes. the and while it's different from for every woman as well, like I feel like the 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 vision that most men have of a woman having an orgasm is just like laid out body season up, some women cry, you know, there's a whole bunch of different <laughs> kind of things that happen. Um, right. So what does it look like for a man? Is it just the same kind of, can, can you experience the same exact kind of things or? Absolutely. A man can experience about eight to 12 different types of orgasms. Um, and um, you can experience, for instance, full body orgasms, ripples and shivers. You can experience, you know, we call it energetic orgasm. So there's, again, it's not bringing it down to just the climatic orgasm we're talking about. So it doesn't always look the same. So, you know, we have to reframe what a sexual experience is like, because it doesn't just start and stop when I enter you and when I'm not, because what if I don't nut? What if we decide that we're both pleased in the, in the moment and we're going to just rest in each other's arms and then we're going to continue. Does that mean that sex stop and start? No, it's a continuation. Like foreplay is a word that I wish we can reframe. Like foreplay is saying, oh, this is what happens before sex. No, it's all a sexual experience. It's all because if she's getting engorged, if she's getting, you know, lubricated, if she's getting, you know, warmed up and, you know, that's all a part of the sexual experience. You know, so it makes it seem like, oh, let's get to the foreplay so I can get you wet enough so I can stick it in. That's basically what we want, what men want for foreplay. And let's get you wet enough. It's like, right? <laughs> He's like, and what's wrong with that? Um, <laughs> but it's, it's so much more than that. 
like we teach practices to couples, you know, that when they connect, by the time that practice is over, it's like it's already the energy is up here. And we have to realize we're energetic beings. We're spiritual beings. We're not just these flesh. We're, it's more than being animalistic. I get nothing wrong with like, I just want to fuck right now. I just want to bang it out. Nothing wrong with that. Again, but expand your toolbox. Brian, we had a whole argument on this podcast because I've been trying to tell Will for the longest <laughs> that foreplay starts like two, three hours, two, three days, two, three weeks before y'all even get to the bedroom. Four play. Okay, now my mind has been changed a little bit today already. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Play, <laughs> before play is the 15 to 20 minutes before insertion. <laughs> That's <laughs> for the longest. <laughs> nah, man, it's, it's that's what we've been <laughs> trained to teach because we want to get her hot enough and wet enough to be like, ooh, put it in, you know? Um, or we just put it in. We don't even really ask. We just feel it's wet enough. We, we do the wet test and then we stick it in. The wet test? When... The wet test. It's, like, it's, it's, it's the wet test. It's like. <laughs> the... <laughs> oh, yeah. <we got it. laughs> okay, so she did. <laughs> There's a different level of wetness for most women. <laughs> so when you're talking about that initial wetness, that's typically she's really still not even ready. When you get her where she's really ready, when she's fully engorged, because technically we have the same parts. It's just ours are outside, theirs are inside, technically. So when we talk about being fully engorged, imagine trying to have sex with a limp uh, penis. Like it's literally, you're not fully engorged. So for a woman to be fully engorged, it does take 20 to 45 minutes to be fully engorged, mostly 45 minutes. So there's practices we teach, you know, men, uh, what do you call them, lingam owners, or, you know, to where you can actually help to stimulate her, you know, without just going in like, oh, let me just go in and dive and then just start eating pussy. And diving for, the, for what, we call, what we think is the, the clitoris, you know, which is, again, there's just little that's just the glands it's like the tip of an iceberg that's literally the tip of the iceberg you know so the clitoris literally wraps around her vaginal, vaginal canal or vaginal canal so but it takes you can stimulate that outside of even you know entering her even though it does get stimulated some but there's ways you can do some direct stimulation there stimulation so so yeah so you know we when, we, when i teach we, we go into anatomy we're teaching the woman's body, we teach the man's body, we teach, you know, um, you know, where the energetic points are in the vagina, on the man's penis or the lingam, like we teach that. Because if you don't know what, where those are, like how can you even please your partner? If she says, I would like, you know, my, my, my clitoral bulbs massage, I would like my, my clitoral stem, the legs massage, I would like, you know, the perineum massage. Like if you, you can't even, you know, and vice versa. If you say, I want my coronal ridge, you know, massage on my penis. Or I want, you know, like you can't, if you don't understand what the body parts are, how can you even get to a place where you're finding pleasure even in the smallest places? We want to go hard and fast. Have we ever experienced going slow and soft and seeing what kind of pleasure that brings to ourselves and our partner? So again, porn doesn't teach you slow and fast, right? Fast and quick. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, money shot. All right, next scene, the mailman comes in. You know, so it's like, <laughs> so yeah. That's what, and I'm so happy you added that caveat of like going slow and steady, not only with your partner, but with yourself. I had a yes. conversation with my homegirl the other day and she made me think, like she said, um, how many men do you know, like who aren't like, you know, cut up in the gym every day? How many right. men do you know, like, Take a time, take take a moment in the mirror to just look at their body in the morning or in the evening or at night or whatever, and just like admire themselves and just like mm. sit with themselves. Like one of the best tantra exercises I learned was just like filling your your arm, just like when you just at work, just filling up your arm, filling your arm up and down, filling your muscles, just sitting with what you feel, acknowledging how you feel, um, just you know sitting with your body, just like touching your body, not in the sexual way, yes. but just in the human way. How yes. many men do you know do that to themselves on a regular basis? And I was like, I don't know any, I don't think. 
I don't think I know. I don't, most people don't, you know, but definitely men. We're not touching, we're not feeling. The only thing we feel is this, like the shaft. It's the only thing we, we touch, <laughs> the shaft. We go to the head a little bit, come down to the shaft. That's it. We don't really touch our balls, really. We don't touch our inner thighs. We don't touch our uh, mom's pubis. We don't touch anything else because this is what we're taught. This is what we know. Knowing that our body is craving to be, to have attention and be touched as well from ourselves, first of all, first of all. So when we teach Tantra, Tantra is, is about ourselves first. You know, most Tantra is being taught. It's like, oh, what can you do for your partner? Oh, can you make your partner come? Oh, can you make her shiver? Someone, you know, you guys said that. Make her just, oh, and Will, you said that. Right. Um, you know, and it's like, but what can you do for yourself? Can you even please yourself? You know, it feels good to yourself, you know, more than just doing that. Because reality is most sex for men is just masturbating inside of a woman's pussy. That's what sex is. There's no connection. We just want to feel that feeling because that's what feels good. And that really why we're going fast, so fast and so hard is because the head of our penis is desensitized because most men are circumcised. The circumcision causes cause circumcision trauma. And when it's that skin, that foreskin is cut away, we literally cut away thousands and thousands of nerve endings that were meant to be there. So, you know, it's, I mean, I'm circumcised, but I realized I had some trauma around that and some, I'm being desensitized. So imagine the first experience you feel on this earth as a young man, as, as a baby, is your penis being cut and then that exposed gland being rubbed against your pamper for months until you build up a coating around it to desensitize it. That's the, tra you can't tell me that's not trauma. Because we did that to a, 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 a woman or yoni on, if we cut away the hood of their penis and allow the, the glands of their clitoris to rub and rub and rub, it would be like, oh, that's genital mutil mutilation. Well, technically, that's what circumcision is. It's genital mutilation. There's no reason for it. Oh, except that it's a huge billion dollar industry that the cosmetic industry uses that foreskin. They buy it. They don't throw it away. They buy it and put it into skin cream for women. So that's one of the uses for our foreskin, you know, the last one. So I can go on. We can have a whole conversation about circumcision, but, you know, I just want to drop that there. <laughs> I was right, with you on the desensitized part. Right. Then, which is cream <laughs> stuff. I was like, oh, God. Right. <laughs> That's what it's used for. Mostly what it's used for. It's big business. Big business. And the reason it started is because Kellogg, Mr. Kellogg, the one that created Kellogg cereal, he wanted to stop masturbating. So he had this campaign years and years and years ago to cut off the foreskin. He felt that that would stop them from masturbating. That's where it started in this modern time. Of course, people think they do it for religion and there are religions that call for it, but there's no medical reason. And most people that do it, they aren't doing it for spiritual reasons at all. You know, it's literally because it's a thing to do and it looks better, right? I mean, who, what woman doesn't want a circumcised penis? You know, my goal is to change that, you know, the whole thought process of it. They call it what, um, Mrs. Nuffleupagus or whatever they call it, if it's not circumcised. But really that's the way it's supposed to be. And the reason why men are going in and out, in and out, in and out, is because again, they're desensitized, but that sleeve around the head of the penis, and when you have that pre-com, that's supposed to be a lubricant and it's a sleeve that goes in and out. And women dry out mostly because men, the head of our penis pulls out the moisture of most women. So if the, with that sleeve there, it's supposed to re retain that moisture. So again, I can go uh, like that, man, I'm gonna stop right there, yeah. You know what's so wild about that <laughs> real quick? Like real quickly, like so. My mom is a nurse, and like uh -huh. she like was like proud of the fact that she had me circumcised. Because I think as a kid, I didn't know what circumcision was. As I think right. I was in like, like middle school, some asked me I was circumcised. She's like, "Hell yeah, you circumcised!" Like, because she said <laughs> she was like, "Yeah, like I wouldn't want you to get all those like diseases and stuff and like germs that can get yeah. caught up in there." And I was like, "Oh, thanks, mom." It's, it's, it's false. Yeah, but I was like, as I got older, I was like, well, what, don't niggas that night circumcise just like pull back the skin and wash? That's like, all you do. I wash it. I mean, same thing happens with, with women, right? They have a lot of folds and, yeah. and they wash it. You pull it back and you wash. That's what you do. Yeah. That's a, it's, it's literally false. And it's what we've been trained. I mean, no kid against moms. I love, love the moms, you know, no, but we no, do, no. We, if we knew better, we do better, right? And that's what it <laughs> that's is. What, um, <laughs> I think it just speaks we, to like how much we just kind of just, have trusted the system that yes. says it's in our best interest, but it, it has yes. its own, like, you know, motives. It has its own agenda. It does. Absolutely. 
Absolutely, it's on agenda, and why they keep it going. That's why it started, but now it's big business. Again, it doesn't go in the trash. It's being sold. The foreskin of your babies are being sold to the cosmetic industry. That is wild. Look it up. Like it's an argument. Look it up. Don't don't trust me. Look it up. <laughs> you know, so. right, next episode is on foreskin conspiracies. <laughs> Look, I'll join in. <laughs> That's so, it. Uh, Moving on from the foreskin conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back to Tantra. Yeah. <laughs> um, how, how do you think Black men's like struggles with our vulnerability and I guess our own bodies and our own insecurities kind of translates into the bedroom? Yeah, and let's back that up a little bit because we do struggle with it. And it's not, most of it is not our fault. Um, we don't have the same experience of other people that walk this earth. Like every... I got me a presence can be a threat to somebody, right? That right there a lot puts our guards up and it's really hard to pull our guards down. We don't, like, when do you do that? Like, put your guard down. Like, we, we need to protect our family, protect ourselves, you know, provide. But it's, you know, mo- uh, it starts really with ep- epigenetics. It starts with slavery. People think, oh, why are you still talking about slavery? It's in ourselves. It's in our cellular level. We do we react to things that's happened to us in the past because we're energetic and it passes on generation to generation, what most people say, generational curses, but really it's just epigenetics. So because of that, you know, it's there. And then we are trained, you know, just by looking, turning on the news, looking around and say, like, I have to create a guard around me. Like I have to make sure I'm protected. Like I'm the man, I'm going to make sure I'm good. So that again is how we live our lives. So why wouldn't it translate? And why wouldn't it, you know, transfer to the bedroom? where we don't trust, you know? Um, if we want something that we're desiring, like if we share that potentially to be like, oh, well, he said he wanted this and it's like, so we don't really trust, but we need to first of all be with a partner that you can completely trust to explore yourself as well. You know, when I, in my, oh, my last marriage, I thought that my only job was to please her. It's a team sport we're in this together we have one common goal and the goal is pleasure that's our goal so we need to be able to express our needs wants and desires in a way that's loving and can be receptive to be received i say love it doesn't mean oh baby could you do i'm not saying you got to talk like that but it's like oh you did you know remember when you did that i really love that can you do more of that please that can be received more than um you know that shit you did fuck i ain't like that shit at all you know, like right there, the guards are up, right? So we have to learn how to communicate to our partner what we're designing as well. Like, I would love to try this with you. Is that okay with you? And getting consent, you know, don't just stick stuff places without getting consent <laughs> from your partner, you know? Uh, so, so it does translate because that's how we live our lives. So what I do is when I coach men is, first of all, is create a, a safe container, safe space. You know, you're safe in this space. There's nothing you can say to me that's one going to be judged or two going to be shared with anyone. So first of all, we don't hear that much off more uh, too often, right? We're in spaces that we know we can share about sexual things. And we talk about how many bodies we have, you know, how, you know, the times we hit, how long we last, all that stuff. But what about things that you don't know about and things that you want to help improve in your life and your sex life? You can go to your boy and say, hey, man, you know, I'm just... You can't really keep it up, man. So what, what, what can you do for me besides him handing you a pill? You understand what I'm saying? Because that's, a, you know, basically it's like, hey, go to the, go to the corner store. They got this one called, uh, you know, all night or whatever. Just grab that and you yeah, can go. Might have some shit. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We can just we name all of them, you know. A Midnight Prince and all these other ones that we can just name. And it's just like, not to mention the Viagra, which is, you know, pretty much the top of the food chain. But that doesn't, that's again works with the effects not with the cause there's a cause to why our bodies aren't responding the way it's created to respond we were created to have erection and to withhold it as long as we choose to but anxiety is one reason why because we feel like oh so you feel you can't get it up then you get there and you really can't because your anxiety is there but what if you breathe what if you start breathing you start talking to your partner like, you know, I'm working on, you know, building up my stamina. Let's breathe together. I'm going to do my breath work. You do your breath work. You know, that's when you get your shit to another level. You know what I mean? And and and, and I, I agree. Sometimes they may get shamed by women. They may say, oh, man, he couldn't even get it up. 
But if I give you tools to work on yourself in your time, by the time you connect with your partner, you're a different person, you know? So that's what, what I teach men. You know what the thing is with about everything you just said, which I could not agree more. I don't think most men know how to make that talk sexy. Like, or, they, or they inherently think that that talk isn't sexy, I should say. Right, right. So it's like, right. for me to say, you know, because I've been there, like, I mean, we all grown men here. I'm sure all of us have had like a failed erection, like, you know. Absolutely. Who hasn't? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Will has them all the time. He's William. Oh, William. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, I have never had a field direction. <laughs> <laughs> no, for some point, like, hey, <laughs> I'm just out here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you lying, bro. But, um, no, like, I've had like several instances. Okay, so the concept of something you mentioned earlier, trying to like, explain to somebody that I don't have to come to have fun or have a good time sexually, that in itself right. is already very hard because I mean, I can say for me personally, I've had my fair share of women who, like if I didn't come, like they would feel instantly right. like they did something wrong or something fucked up right. with me or whatever right. that. So that's one thing, trying to explain <laughs> that. But like, two, and we just had to talk with this, with our friend on Michelle, the concept of making consent sexy. Like I don't think men think, Love except that. for me, do something can be sexy. Like, how do you change yeah. men's mindsets around just it seems oh, like just man. the simplest stuff just to make sure everybody's safe to make this seem sexy? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of men can look at consent as a bad thing. Like it's it's almost hated by men because there was a time we can do anything we wanted to do, right? Like we can walk, we can smack a woman's ass, we can grab her breasts and ha he he in school growing up. I know growing up, we used to pull girls' bra straps. You know what I'm saying? Like we used to just ha ha, like they were just like victims of our abuse. And the thing is, is that it's sexier, man, ask for permission. How many men even has ever asked for a woman for permission to even enter her? They are into you now. Man, that would blow her mind. We don't. Like again, the wet the way you said. The wet test, you know, hey, and it's like I'm gonna look down there and I'll be like, You good? <laughs> <laughs> you commence the test, the you test, know. though. <laughs> that's good. Hey, hey, that's good. Exactly. That final point. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, <laughs> I'm just kidding now. I'm kidding. <laughs> I know you're on way. I know, I know. But that's, but we joke about it, but it's true, right? That's how we kind of feel. Like if she's wet, that means she's has given her approval, not realizing that's just reaction mm. to a stimulation. That doesn't mean she's really ready. What if she wants to be stimulated in other ways? What if she wants a full body massage? She's still gonna get, you know, uh, start to get wet. Does that mean she's ready to be entered? No. One of the biggest things that breakthroughs for my wife was when I did that, we first met and I gave her I was giving her a gift. I'm gonna give you a full body massage, essential massage. I said, and this is just about you. I don't want anything after that. I want you to just enjoy it. She literally broke out in tears because most women feel like if I do this for you, then guess what? You got to do this for me, right? So how about having a session where it's literally all about her and or all about him, where literally you don't have to do anything that you desire unless you. This is you calling the shots here. If you desire to make love afterward. Just let me know, but I'm not expecting anything. I'm just here to please you. Like, women don't really hear that. You know, I, I don't really hear that they can just receive that without having to perform after. Because that's what porn teaching is, right? You eat her, she sucks you, you fuck, turn around doggy style, give her the, the facial, the end. You know, that's the patented routine. So, again, expansion talking, communicating, when you're talking about Mike, um, about, you know, women feeling that, you know, it's almost like a failure for them if you, you know, don't come. Again, that comes with communication. And to explain, like, I'm having orgasms, regardless of if I come or not. Like, trust me, this feels great. But communicating that, men don't communicate. We don't talk, barely even fucking moan. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's, it's just... <laughs> seems a sign of weakness. Go ahead, Mike. 
No, nah, I want to take a, a, a break for the niggas. Niggas, please, I'll be moaning now. Nigga, I'll be making noise out here. Like, <laughs> I'm not with that whole, like, quiet shit. Because the thing is, any woman I've been with loves that shit. Loves right. that shit. They like, do. They do. I have a group, an Instagram group, the artist sacred sexuality. We talk about a lot of sexual topics and most of it's tongue in cheek, you know, I, you know, but I put polls out there and every woman loves a man that is expressive and moans that I, every woman does. If there's one or two that does, it's very, very few, but women love that shit, as you said, Mike, but we want to be that. Yeah, well, take that shit, smack an ass, you know, it's like. Can you are, are you enjoying this shit too? Or are you just here to beat her ass up? Like what are you giving any pleasure in this? I mean, come on. It's wild, y'all. You about, you about to say something, Will? Yeah, I I wanted to touch back on uh men like asking for permission during sex because no lie, yes. I've had issues where like I've either I, so I've in the past I've asked for permission. You know, let me stick it in your butt. No, whatever. You know, whatever. Right, right. And you know, you get rejected once, and it's like, oh, that's kind of a boner kill. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's like, oh, I, I don't know if it was the butt thing, but it might have been like a facial or something. Whatever. You know, it's like a boner kill, and so then you kind of keep that with you, and it's like, oh, well, I'm not gonna ask for this no more. <laughs> so at, at that point, you're towing the line between like not fully getting having yourself sexually satisfied or repressing things and then like having just kind of super basic lame sex where you're where you're not getting fully fulfilled well this is some conversation about sex and what we're desiring is to happen early on in the relationship first of all um so I, if you're desiring to give a facial and again that's really porn culture but it's cool if that's what you desire you know what i mean but the thing is is that really um, we need to have these conversations. Like, I would love, you know, to give you a facial or something I can do when we when we make love or when we have sex. And she lets you know outside the bedroom, trying that in the bedroom, like it is the bone of the But at least you, you know, she may say, Well, you can't come on my face, but you can come on my breast, or you can come on my ass. How about that? Or on my belly. So those are negotiations we talk about beforehand, so that when you get in the bed and it's like you already know the game plan before you don't just pull it on and like you're like, oh, can I come in your face? And she's like, no, you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Yo, that was yeah. the most porn yeah. sound I've ever heard. <laughs> you know, <laughs> come on your face. That's what niggas do. They like wait. <laughs> they try to pull her hair. They're like, get down here, get down here. <laughs> I know, I'm not my hair, not my hair, not my hair. No, no, no. You know, yeah. That's not when you want to do oh, that. Man. It's not. <laughs> so you want to have this conversation beforehand. Oh boy. Consent can be sexy. I'm a creative kid. <laughs> Showing up to consent is sexy, it is yeah. being able to know what you can and can't do because you don't want you, you have anxiety, you wonder if you can do it, you, you want anal, you know, you have anxiety. Oh, I'm gonna ask it while we're in the act. No, find out ahead of time and have everything you need handy because you need tools handy, right? You need yeah. a lot of lube, you need some tools, I mean, you know, some um, uh, towels, you need stuff handy. Be ready for it. That's sexy being like, okay, so let's do it. And you know, are you ready for it? Because you already have anticipation built up. And if it's a no, you want to know ahead of time, honestly. You don't want to say, okay, I got it all, all hot now, and I'm going to try it now. That's the shit you don't want to fucking do. Man. That, that's the shit. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to men. Like, that's the shit yeah, you, well, you, you well, don't want to do. <laughs> not my <right> person. <laughs> Hilarious. Oh, man. Oh. Every nigga's been guilty of that, though. Like, trying to hurry up and do some shit that wasn't yeah, yeah, ever discussed. Yeah, we we've all guilty of it. <laughs> and talk about it. Just no consent at all. Just it's a different day and time, man. We gotta change how we function and how we deal with our, our queens, man. We gotta treat them, you know, as our queens and really have give them a voice because they, they were repressed. I believe they will give us a lot more um if we have these conversations and if we um honor their desires as well. We as we want our desires. We have desires too. I'm not saying it's all about Women, women, like we have desires too. Well, I would like this. I would love this position. Well, let's do that. Create your scene. You know, like you know, you're talking about porn. You know, they create scenes. Create your scene. What do you want to experience? You want to bring toys into the bedroom. You want to bring BDSM. You want to bring some whips. You want to bring some handcuffs. Let's talk about this. Don't just tie her ass up without getting consent first. <laughs> you know, you want to do that. Smash, 
If you don't, don't smack on the ass if you if you have an at permission. Do you like your ass smacked? That's a quick question. Yes, I do, or no, I don't. Simple question. She doesn't. Don't smack her ass. <laughs> you know, just as simple as that. You just can't do that with that partner. Go ahead, Mike. I was say real quick, then I get to you, Will. Um, that's the thing. Like once you do that, once you create that scene, once you had that discussion beforehand, not only does that give clarity and consent. Now you got that shit to look forward to when y'all actually start fucking. Absolutely. Which makes Absolutely. you even hornier. Absolutely. <laughs> you, that anxiety is gone. You're like, you're ready, like, ah, oh, shoot, we about to do it. You know, like, yes. Yeah, we're gonna I've been born in this. this. <laughs> yeah. My wife doesn't like pain. She does not like pain. Mm. So smacking on the ass is out of the question. <laughs> you know what I mean? She doesn't like pain at all. Pain does not equate, equate to pleasure for her. So I know, but there's other things that I can and will do that equals pleasure for both of us. So we had this conversation early on. I didn't just come in and just meet her and then start smacking her on the ass because I saw someone do it on TV and they like it. And all women love it. It's just whatever your partner likes, that's what you want to do, you know? So... Some men like their, you know, their balls suck underneath their balls. Some men like their ass suck. Talk about that shit if you, you know, I like do whatever. <laughs> you know, that's something you talk with your partner. You know, so it's like it's no judgment there. But you got to have a partner that you trust and, you know, you can have these conversations with and you get what you want. Um, Real quick, I am currently reading a book called uh, Your Brain on Porn. It's, it's pretty interesting so far. Um, interesting. But anyways. It, it talks about like how our reward system and everything is just fucked up because of porn. Uh, just right. basically how our mind works. With teaching Tantra and just experiencing people overall, how how bad do you think the, the, the waters are muddied between what we believe is sex and how we uh, actually have sex based on what, what porn has showed us? I'm trying to see how to express this in a way that I can make it as clear as possible. Like, it's muddy is not the word. It's just engulfed. Our society's engulfed with porn culture. I can't. Nothing wrong. If you want to watch porn, it's fine. I'm not knocking anybody's hustle. However, we have to understand that the, the, the damaging effects that it does have on our lives and our sexuality. Sexuality. So, it's it's completely muddy. It's completely covered. It's completely just not where we should be. It's not. It's not where we should be. I mean, most if you if you even watch, you know, amateur porn or you know, homegrown porn, where you see people that are not porn stars, what they're doing is replicating what they see in porn. And I can say it's not pleasurable. It doesn't feel good, but. There's so much more, and that's all I want to say. There's more to it, so it is. It, it's it's fucked up. What we think about sexuality is just not where it is and what it should be. Nowhere close. So, so as you start people down the journey uh, of tantra or sexual liberation or how, how, whatever we want to call, you know, getting, right. getting somebody on the right path of what sex is, is is the beginning portion just kind of breaking the 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 hold that uh, porn has on people's thinking in a way? Yeah, yeah, in a way, uh, yes, definitely yes, but I don't start there. I start with the realization of who we are and our possibilities, because at that point, we're creating a new causation. We're creating a new cause that starts to, uh, the other stuff starts to fade away. One of my guys I was coaching um, early this, last year, um, he was really, really deep into porn, started teaching him about these connection practices himself he said i literally after you know a month or two he's like i literally have no desire to watch porn it's like it went away so it wasn't attacking the porn it's allowing the person to realize that i can go deeper to a deeper place where the porn is not my go-to anymore i don't even desire it anymore the conversations he used to have with women and what they were offering he didn't even that was like laughable to him because he realized how deep he was and where he could go so it's teaching a new way right teaching a new path you know to get someone off a path that's really rocky and bumpy it's like you get them on the smooth road you don't try to fix the road that's all bumpy because that's a lot of work right we nobody really wants to do all that work but let's bring them a new path oh 
it's good over here. Oh, wow, it's smooth over here. Oh, there's snacks over here. Oh, the sunshine. And like, it's a whole new world, you know, <laughs> when you're teaching your way. So that's what I do. Word, word, word. Super, super dope. Like, I guess this would be the, like the last question because you the best kind of guest, sure. Brian, because you answer like multiple questions at once. Like, you have a whole outline. <laughs> I'll I'll be like, going, I'll I just have to stop. Boom, boom. No, no. Like, he'll, he'll, he'll hit boom, 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 boom. He'll hit like three questions at once. It's like, damn, we got to find new material. <laughs> so I guess I was ended with like, what is the best way? Because I feel like I was taking like a shot by wanting to do this topic. Like we have a mostly uh, woman audience. Like I said, I right. don't, we don't, me and Will do not have this conversation with our homeboys at all. Right. Like, exactly. How do we get more men to just see that other side of things and just know that there's, because the hardest thing about anything is getting people to use their imagination. I feel like adults anyway, kids can use their imaginations all day, every day. All the time. Right. Right. Adults. Like we think if we hit a certain age, we don't seen it all. We know how it's going to be. We know how it's been. Like, there's nothing else for me. This is my life now. Boom. Right. Like, how do we get more people to see that other side without seeing the instant results and instant satisfaction of the other side? Like, how do we get more men on board with this? I mean, follow people that are doing this shit. You know, like, if you want to learn something, if you want to learn how to be a carpenter, which you hang around carpenters, right? You want to learn how to cook, you hang around cooks. You want to learn how to be, you know, uh, a masterful uh sexual person then you hang on people that have the knowledge that's what it comes down to so i mean follow me you know i'm always have something going on always sharing if you need some coaching i can help coach this is something you also you can't really learn from a book because every person is different we talked about that so and this is not you know the shameless plug but like you need a coach if it's not me get a coach that has that is who you connect with that has what you want and learn open your heart open your mind to say yes. If you say yes, that's the first step. Yes, I'm willing to learn. It's hard to get men to say yes, especially black men. Just to say yes. They say yes, okay, cool. Now we can take it from there. So, but surround yourself with the people that you want to learn from. Thanks. So, oh. thanks. Well, if they do want to, you, would you have any more questions? No, no, I'm good. I've, I've learned everything. Um, <laughs> fully connected <laughs> No nah, man, I, this was this was this was very dope. Um, thank you so much because it's it's kind of an iceberg as as far as you know the potential um, of you know liberation you can give yourself. Yes, absolutely. I appreciate you guys for opening up this floor, this topic. You know what I mean? It's well needed in our community, man. So I appreciate that more than anything. No doubt, family. We appreciate you taking the time, but. So you can say yeah. to yourself, like if they can use you as a coach, like please, please. Oh, absolutely. Like any contact information, any special events you got coming up or offers, please take all the time you need to just promote your stuff. Yeah, just follow me on, on every platform, Explore Tantra, Explore Tantra on Instagram, Explore Tantra on Twitter, if you're on Facebook, uh, Explore the Art of Tantra, and if you our website, ExploreTantra.com. So if you... Look it up on any platform you find it's find me and my wife as well. We do individual coaching, individual coaching as well as uh, couples coaching. So, um, so yeah, look me up. Be glad to, you know, talk with you, have a complimentary discovery session with you, see if it's a good fit, let you know what you're looking at, and you know, just let's just wrap and just, you know, help you get where you where you want to go to. I'm a coach. That's what I do. For real, man. Hit him up, please. He clearly knows what he's talking about. Um, great peoples. Um, this is probably one of my favorite episodes. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I appreciate um, that, man. Thank you. So much good information for real, dude. Um, we're gonna really quickly. I don't know if I told you this part, but we get into a thirst of the week where we just celebrate black women out here just being fine and wonderful and amazing. Uh, I think Will has it this week. Yep. Uh, this week we have the lovely Miss Naturally Layla. Who's um, that? Oh, oh, how dare! <laughs> hey, hey, beautiful Bonte. Um, super dope, um, beautiful woman. And I first got, uh, I was about to say turned on, but, um, <laughs> that's what you meant. That's what you meant. I, right. <laughs> uh, I first, uh, saw her because she posted some, she posted some little quote or saying or something. And uh, I think it speaks real true to, uh, everybody who owns a business and everybody who needs support, but doesn't get it. She said something along the lines of, uh, 
yeah, you say you want to support, but I haven't seen you at any of my events. Mm-hmm. And so it spoke, it rang true because especially with Mike, well, he he's he's always out here doing stuff, and you know, you always hear people saying they want to support, and sometimes it doesn't go through. But anyways, no, nope. she is amazingly beautiful. She bayed just off that quote. Bro, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> just off the quote. Um love that. So she is just oh yeah, let me let me get oh let me do that. Okay, all right. Oh, the yam huggers. Oh, no. Yeah, I know she got the Amazon joints on. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, she's beautiful. Uh, you can check her out, underscore, uh, underscore uh, naturally Layla. Um, she's got a dope profile up here. Check her out. She's got all the hair products and all the other shit. So, super popping. Oh, the other shit. You just the worst. All right, <laughs> shut up. Shut up. All right, how do I get out of this? <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. Oh, there you go. There. Um, stop share at the bottom. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> this is uncharted territory for Will. He's never been to right. <laughs> No, man. Well, for real, Brian. Like, this is definitely top five better live episodes. Yeah. I amazing. love, love, love that we can have a group of men talking about find a pleasure for ourselves as well as women without misogyny and shit, without a bunch of, you know, just gross shit going on. Like, this right. is super amazing. Um, I would love to talk to you for like three more hours, but I know you got stuff to do. <laughs> so once again, man, thank you so much for drop, dropping by. Yes, sir. Um, we got to do some clubhouse rooms, bro. I know we talked about it last time. Let's talk about love. it, man. Let's do it. Sounds good, bro. Thank you, Chase. Yeah, I'll be a guest on. Yeah, absolutely, man. Let's do it. Let's keep spreading the absolutely. word. We're gonna look. We're gonna get men together. We're gonna be all busting like fifty <laughs> months out here at night. That's exactly. in our lady. And right, will. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to bust at all. I just want to have my orgasm without busting. I, no, I want to see what that's like because I still don't really good. believe it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We're going to come back on the next episode and teach us about semen retention one-on-one. <laughs> for now, nah, man, we appreciate y'all for tuning in. As always, thank you, Brian, again for coming through. Uh, we love y'all. We'll be back in another two weeks. And um, yeah, yeah, appreciate peace, y'all. Peace, 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 peace. Hold it down. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.